Oh my goodness, even though the Las Vegas Raiders have absolutely hit rock bottom, there is still a sliver of hope for them to make the playoffs as long as they keep it at only eight losses this season. We're going to get into what that scenario could possibly look like. And also, Josh McDaniels, does he even want to make the playoffs this year? Does he have some ulterior motives? Early in the season, we thought, hey, maybe this guy is tanking. And then we had some wins to kind of take the heat off. But now the heat is coming back as Raider Nation looks at that current draft draft position. Raiders are currently projected to pick 8th overall. What does this mean for the future? We are almost at 40,000 subscribers. Hit that red subscribe button and let me know how long have you been subscribed to this channel supporting Wi-Fi Willie Raiders. Now Harvester Sports, Derek Carr's nephew, Derek Carr's family, Raiders fans here talking about the playoff chances for the Raiders. A couple of mistakes in here. Patriots must lose one of their next five games is what it says. Actually, the Patriots must lose two of their next five games. They are playing the Cardinals tonight on Monday Night Football. Then they'll be playing the Raiders on Sunday in the afternoon because the Raiders and the Patriots got demoted from Sunday Night Football, pushed into the afternoon. And the Jets must lose two games. They just took an L this past Sunday. The Chargers picked up a W. Raiders need the Chargers to lose twice in order to make the playoffs. They're going to be playing the Titans, Colts, Rams, and then also the Broncos. So the Raiders are going to be relying on a combination of Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, and Russell Wilson to help us get into the playoffs. So Chargers, Chargers losing twice might be the hardest thing to see happen, especially after they picked up the dub against the Dolphins, but the Patriots losing twice is quite likely, and could they lose to the Raiders this upcoming Sunday? Bill Belichick has been known to throw Josh McDaniels a bone so far this season. Keep in mind, the Raiders pluck so much of the Patriots coaching staff. Josh McDaniels even talked to him about it. Bill Belichick was cool about it, and and it even led to people saying, hey, the Raiders are Patriots West. That's all they are. It's just a replica, a duplicate copy of the Patriots organization, and it was wasn't only Patriots coaches, you also had tons of players go on and join the Raiders, even Jared Stidham being traded to the Raiders for practically nothing, a backup QB. And also Justin Heron, the offensive tackle, who's on IR right now for the Raiders, was traded from the Patriots to Raiders for practically crumbs. It just felt like this whole entire offseason. If you're a Raiders fan, from your perspective, it just seemed like Bill Belichick just kept helping his boy Josh McDaniels out. And maybe he'll help him out again this upcoming week by dropping an L to the the Raiders to maybe help genius Josh get to the playoffs. But to even talk about the Chargers losing twice, the Jets losing twice, the Patriots losing twice, all these things, the Raiders just straight up need to win these next four games. And that almost feels like the least likely thing we could envision happening. Josh McDaniels has been losing in historic fashion this year, unprecedented fashion. And people really need to start thinking about this and look at the straight up facts, man. No coach that the Raiders have had has lost in this dramatic of a fashion. The Raiders have lost four games this season after leaving leading by 13 points or more. This is absolutely ridiculous. And in this Rams game, you can see the win probability. Raiders are way up top, 98% and somehow found a way to lose. And that is Josh McDaniels finding a miracle way to lose. And to me, like the only way you find a miracle way to lose several times throughout the season is if you're, I don't know, trying to find a miracle way to lose. And this is just absolutely insane. I don't even like Josh Dubow, but he says the Raiders are 0-4 this season when leading by double digits at halftime. They're the first team since the 19th. 1930s to lose four times in a season when leading by double digits at the half. And we have documented this throughout the whole entire season. Some of the boneheaded decisions by Josh McDaniels to help the Raiders lose the game in the end, whether it's running the ball on third and long, playing press man coverage when you got to cover deep, or making your running back try to throw the football even though he has a messed up pinky, Josh McDaniels constantly makes decisions that put his team in the worst position. And the biggest decision he makes is just to straight up not use his star player, the guy who we're paying all this money to, Demonte Adams. Josh McDaniels decides not to throw him the football in the second half. And it's not like, oh, Derek Carr's going through his reads and then he just doesn't decide to throw it to Devontae Adams. No, Derek Carr wants to throw it to Devontae Adams, but the play call, it's not even intended to go to Devontae Adams or most of the time, not even intended to throw the football. The Raiders ran the football against the Rams. Think about this. They ran the football against the Rams the most they have all year, the most they have in any single game all year. They ran it the most against the Rams. And this is a Rams team that is absolutely great against the run and not so great against the pass. And they still decided to run Josh Jacobs into the ground. Josh Jacobs was banged up heading into this game. And when they ran the football, just like Frank right here is saying, you're only getting 3.7 yards of carry. That is bad. You want to have that over four. And Derek Carr was looking good when he was passing the football in the first half to Devonta Adams over Jalen Ramsey. And it's crazy when we just look at and, and categorize all the historic losses for the Raiders this season. Losing in the final minutes to the Chargers, letting the Cardinals come back 
back when you're up 20 to zero, also losing in the final moments to the Titans and the Chiefs. At first, I never gave criticism to Josh McDaniels because honestly, this game was super rigged, Chiefs versus Raiders, but Josh McDaniels did decide to go for the two-point conversion when he could have tied the Chiefs in the final minutes of the game. And really, why would you make that decision when you're looking at it, bro? You could have tied it and gone to overtime. Saints was an absolute disaster where you barely targeted Devontae Adams. The Jags managed to beat the Raiders by seven points and Jeff Saturday and the Colts defeated the Raiders and it felt like it was easy for them to defeat the Raiders. Made Matt Ryan look like Lamar Jackson. And then we had a little honeymoon. Uh Uh-oh, the marriage might be saved. Broncos, Seahawks, and Chargers victories. Uh Uh-oh, the Raiders are going to the Super Bowl and boom, smack back to reality. Rams defeating the Raiders in the final seconds. And so when you look at all this, not only was the Baker Mayfield Rams loss embarrassing because Baker Mayfield had only been there for 48 hours allegedly, which I I don't totally believe because he bought the plane ticket before he was even signed by the Rams. Either way, you had that loss to Saturday, you had that loss to Baker Mayfield, and you had that horrible loss where Andy Dalton and the Saints shut you out. But when you look at it, and this guy Jason's pointing it out, none of those were the three games where they blew a 17-point lead. So we have these three embarrassing losses. Oh, uh uh-oh, they're not even the other three embarrassing losses, which were unprecedented losses where you gave up huge, huge leads to blow the game. So I bring up these humiliating losses, and I bring up these unprecedented L's to make a point about Josh McDaniels. And we made this earlier on in the season, said, hey, is it possible this guy is tanking this year, trying to get a loaded up draft, trying to get some of his own guys and trying to maybe get his own quarterback? And I keep seeing all these things about, oh, Derek Carr, oh, he's the problem. There's some people who are trying to point the finger at Derek Carr, but that really just takes the heat away from Josh McDaniels. And the simple fact, in my opinion, is Derek Carr can't win these games if his head coach doesn't want to. And in my opinion, Josh McDaniels does not want to win these games. He is blowing leads on purpose, in my opinion. And I know that sounds crazy, especially after the fact that the Raiders went on a win streak. But hey, think about how we felt before the Raiders beat the Broncos. Think about how we all felt before you had all those locker room videos. Uh Uh-oh, Josh McDaniels, Derek Carr hugging each other. They're celebrating. And all this came after Derek Carr was crying. Derek Carr was crying after the Colts lost because you know what? I think he kind of felt that there was some tankathon going on. And he tried to say there were some players who weren't pulling their weight. We don't actually know who these players are. Derek Carr claims it's not Darren Waller, so who could it possibly be? And I just think, wow, Derek Carr, when given an opportunity, balls out in the passing game, and Josh McDaniels purposely just goes away from it. So how could Derek Carr show that he's a great QB when Josh McDaniels is just straight up not calling his number, running the Raiders into the ground? I mean, think think about what we did against the Rams. He literally ran the Raiders into the ground, just kept running the football. And to me, when people point the finger at Derek Carr, I just feel like it's taken the heat away from Josh McDaniels. I also believe, I truly believe, I truly believe that Josh McDaniels could win these games if he wants to. I really do believe that. And I think he is screwing it up on purpose. He gave us the three game win streak as a honeymoon because the Raiders right now are going to be drafting eighth overall. And if they continue to lose games this season, they could end up with the top five draft pick if they really want to. And I could also end up eating my words if the Raiders end up winning any of these next few games. Because if they end up winning, say, eight games, if you win maybe be seven games, then you kind of hurt your draft spot. And you're probably not going to be taking some type of quarterback or some type of high profile player to change the franchise if you got seven victories. So we'll see if Bill Belichick helps out Josh McDaniels in one of two ways this upcoming Sunday. By letting him get the victory, allowing the Raiders to try to have a miracle playoff push, or by giving Josh McDaniels an L, helping the Raiders draft position so Josh McDaniels can make this team in his own image. And even though Brady completely embarrassed himself, got completely owned by a rookie quarterback this past Sunday. Really just looked like he could not produce at all at age 45. Well, now the rumors are happening with Greg Rosenthal about Josh McDaniels and Brady. Could it happen next year? Could you get picks for Carr and then move on and get Brady? And and it's so weird. Like, if Carr is so great where you can get picks for him, then clearly he's not the problem. Clearly Derek Carr is not the problem if you're able to get a first round pick, second round picks for Derek Carr. That just shows more that Josh McDaniels is choosing not to win with Derek Carr if he's good enough to get so many picks. But Brady to Vegas, I don't know. Mark Davis did want to sign this guy before. There was actually a rumor back in 2020. Not only did you have the Dana White stuff where he said, oh, we're trying to get to Vegas, but Gruden blocked it. But you also have the fact that the Raiders allegedly offered him a two-year, $60 million contract before Gruden shut it down. And here's how I feel about this, man. If we have to get Brady and the Patriots for the Raiders to win a Super Bowl, then it's not even the Raiders winning a Super Bowl. It's just the Patriots winning a Super Bowl again with a different uniform form on. And if we have to do it that way, to me, it's just not even worth it anymore. It sucks out all of the fun and the 
value of it. I, I think it would be really great to truly win a Super Bowl with Raiders players, real Raiders players and real Raiders talent, rather than just having to completely replicate the Patriots and really just help the Patriots, aka Brady McDaniels and the referees and Roger Goodell, win another Super Bowl. In other news, John Simpson was recently released by the Raiders. And, you know, either way, we will be live for this upcoming game Sunday, even if it's painful, even if it's shitty. We're going to be doing live play by play and reaction to Raiders versus Patriots on Sunday at one o'clock. Also going to be live every Monday at 3 30 p.m. before Monday Night Football. So check us out then. You know, win, lose, or tie, Raider Nation till I die. I'm going to keep on following the drama that is the Raiders and trying to give you guys what I believe is happening. Like this video if you haven't yet and subscribe to this channel for more Raiders content. My name is Wi Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.